Hi everybody, welcome to the show and we're coming to you from Heathridge tonight or Saturday if you're watching it'll be during the day of course and of course I've got the Action Man, how you going Action Man? I'm famous, I made page 9 I, 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 here. Last Wednesday's paper, girls do not let this guy buy you a drink alright? <laughs> or this one either or that oh, one actually. That one. And uh, Wayne, how you going Wayne? I'm going uh, fantastic, it should be a great night and I'm trying to figure out why I have this gold member in my hand man, what's up? <laughs> Uh, it's a famous movie yeah. or something. Is that is, what it is? Is this a hands-on type of deal? Oh, well, you're always complaining about this? not having a mic, and this is my way of saying, Wayne, you've got a mic. Yeah. There you go. How's that? Thanks, mate. I feel a lot better, man. Good. Now, see, that way when he talks, you guys don't have to listen to oh. it. And, of course, James, how you going, Mike? How you doing? I'm doing very well, miss. And uh, ready to rock and roll, make sure it's a good show tonight. What are we What are we here for? What's happening tonight? Well, we're actually here for the Blue Light Disco, and there's 92.9 here. It's a really huge event, so uh, stay with us tonight. It should how be huge. It's huge. Huge, baby, huge. Huge. Okay, well, we're going to have a lot of fun. As we always say, let's get the uh, balls and all rolling. And uh, we're going to go to a story. There's a huge concert coming up on August the 24th with uh, all the greats of the uh, Australian music industry. Some of the people have been around for a while. And I was really happy to have caught up with Glenn Shorrock. You'll, you'll know who that is. Of course, anyone who likes the Little River Band, let's go and have a look at this story. Well, you know, we uh, here on Balls and I, we do all kinds of crazy things, and sometimes you just got to settle down, and you have to have time for a cool change. And I'm here talking to uh, one of the greats of Australian rock and roll. You know, we've had Normie and Little Patty and uh, and uh, quite a few of uh, the great artists. I'm happy to be here talking to one of the guys who was basically the lead singer of uh, Little River Band and took them to America and was basically an opening for a lot of artists to follow because they went to America, went crazy, opened the charts and away it went. I'm here ha happy to talk to Mr. Glenn Shork. Hi Glenn, how are you? Cheers Bruce, how are you doing? Thanks for those kind words. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that, that, that achievement that the LRB did open the door for a lot of other Australian contemporary acts. I think uh, Man at Work and Air Supply in Excess, uh, and more recently Savage Garden. You know, owe owe as a, a debt of thanks. And uh, certainly do. But um, you know, we we were very lucky, and we had a good uh, a good run there. We had top top ten hits eight times in a row. Yeah, eight top ten hits. And uh, that that counts you know it's it's one thing getting one hit but it's another thing following it up and following it up and following yes. it up which we were able to do and um who knows i mean maybe little river band will be in the next long way to the top uh, incarnation because we're not we're not going that far i mean obviously this long way to the top thing that i'm involved with now is more a celebration of these the early days of australian rock and roll which i was involved in as well back in the mid 60s with the twilights from adelaide yeah and then uh, later after that... Uh, Who also had quite a few uh, top ten hits as well. Yeah, we, we, we were pop stars in those days, you know, yeah. I mean, Screaming Girls and all that sort of stuff. And that was fun. Actually, actually known as the Beatles of Australia back then, which... Yeah, uh, it's a bit embarrassing you know, that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we didn't sort of push that too far, but we just played that music because it was great music to play, really. And Cut Your Teeth on that, on that material was a, a good thing for an, a fledgling band. Um, and then later I, I teamed up with uh, Brian Cadd in, Axiom, in a yeah. band called Axiom and uh, we'll be featuring Little Ray of Sunshine and I Can Saw Grass on the, on the shot. On Actually the shot. just on the Little Ray of Sunshine because we know that, uh, that fairly famous song and then you guys, it was kind of like out of your character, you, you came into yeah. that song, what, what brought that about? Yeah, it was, a, it was kind of a unique accident in, in a way, you know, that song I don't think was, uh, certainly wasn't part of our repertoire to begin with, but we recorded it and, and we could see the that it was going to have and uh, it's become a classic you know I mean they, they played at christenings and births and all sorts of stuff and uh, but yeah we, we were more um, we were trying to be the band I think in in those times you know we were very influenced by uh, the band and you know, Robbie Robertson's yeah. writing and Lee Von Helm singing and drumming and that that they were the big uh, influences at the time. Just a bunch of hillbillies virtually when you actually know the background got together and did it. Now yeah. you touched a bit on Brian Cad, mm -hmm. Brian Cad who uh, 
uh, also did very well as on his own. Uh, and then I remember he, uh, on one of the uh, TV shows, talked about croc, country rock, which he kind of got into. Uh, you guys still good buddies today and still doing some stuff? Because he's actually on this tour as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, he's probably the closest friend I've got in the business, you know, as far as some performers go. Uh, we still see a lot of each other. He stays at my place when he's in town in Sydney and vice versa. I, you know, I'll, I'll stay with him. Yeah, yeah, Brian's had a good career, you know. He um, he had the bootleg family back in, yeah. the, which was probably one of the first independent labels that was run by a muso. Yes, and yes. by a muso, you know. Yes. And, and that, that stood him in good, good stead over the years. You know, he's probably the most knowledgeable guy I know as far as the understanding the, the business of publishing and songwriting, you know, all facets of, of, of contemporary show business. And, um, yeah, he's been a good ally to me. And... And we both enjoy a, a good red, so we're, we're, we're good friends. That's good. Now, uh, we've seen, of course, the Little, Little River Band. You went to America, you put out an album. <coughs> you guys worked hard trying to get it around, and nothing was happening. All of a sudden, the DJ down in Florida grabbed hold of it, uh -huh. started pumping it around, and you guys just took, took over by storm. What were those days like? Yeah, well, it didn't feel like a storm, I must admit, Moose. You know, it was, uh, it was a job of work, and we were, we were interested in doing it. Um, uh, it, it, did, it was a small fire, as you say, in, in Jacksonville, Florida. We were, I remember our first tour, no one knew who, who the hell we were in the rest of the country, but in, in Jacksonville, we were huge. You know, we sold out two concerts, and it was amazing. And then from there, three years touring virtually uh, took yeah. you guys, uh, yeah. really kind of drained you. W would that kind of been the uh, start of when things kind of oh, went yeah. a bit funny with you guys? Yeah, you know, it, there's no free lunch, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. It's, not all, it's not all swings and roundabouts. I mean, we were having great success and enjoying that success, and there's no doubt about it, but it, uh, it takes its toll. We didn't realize, you know, how, how, how much we were going to be away from home and... Uh, you know, it was difficult to being cooped up together all the time. Uh, you know, you're in a bus in the daytime. You're, you're with each other for 24 hours, basically, yeah. and that, that can be a bit wearing. Sure. Yeah. Well, we've seen, of course, the Beatles and all many great yeah, groups going through the stage. Now, um, you guys traveling around together, um, was there any kind of clowning around you guys remember? Or you guys uh, broke the monotony? Humor has always gone along with, with my career, yes. I never take too, anything too seriously. So, yes. I remember, you know, dancing with palm trees across lobbies and stuff like that and being silly. But but never, we were never really uh, uh, a publicity-seeking band. You know, we, we want, we'd rather our songwriting and our, music. and our music do the talking for us. So, you know, we never did any sort of TVs out of hotel windows. Well, not very often. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you want to talk about. Now, of course, uh, here in Australia with... Uh, what, yes? A phone book makes a really good noise when it hits a pool from 20 stories up. <laughs> Is there a pull out sign? Let's have a go. Now, um, of course, here in Australia, Countdown, Molly Meldrum, we've also seen you hosting the show a few times yeah, did, yeah. and running it. And uh, the old days, it was either you or Shirley Strong virtually uh, yeah, and, uh, there all the time. And Daryl, Daryl Braithwaite and John Paul Young, they used to do it a bit. But I... My claim to fame is uh, I hosted the first sort of video clip show called uh, Rock Arena for the ABC yeah. back in the 80s. I don't know whether people remember that. And that was uh, an interesting thing. I got to be on the other side of the microphone and interviewed, um, you know, um, Bernie Taupin and um, Robert Plant, people like that. And that was, that was an interesting facet of my career. I've always, you know, thought of myself as, a, as an entertainer rather than just a lead singer of a rock band. I, Hopefully there's that, more there's more to me than that, you know. That always came across too when you did do countdown. You you weren't one who just came out, did the song and disappeared. You came out, you had fun, you interacted with the uh, the crowd and everything. You really sold the song in other yeah. words and whatever. Then years of course uh went by, you guys uh did what a lot of bands do, disappeared but you didn't say, Oh well that's it, give it away. You you kept going, actually went to England and actually mm -hmm. Moved in virtually next door to the Beatles. How was that? Well, not not quite next door, but they, uh, you know, the one of the most exciting nights of my life was uh, at, at Abbey Road Studios. We we were recording uh, in 1967, um, the Twilight Sisters, and uh, at the same night down the corridor, you know, literally within shouting distance of each other, the Beatles were recording Strawberry Fields and 
Penny Lane, two, two of the probably most significant mm. Beatles songs ever, and they were both on on one the A and B side of the of the one record. You know, that was a that was an amazing night. Yeah. We were t we were so in awe of that, you know, yeah. of, the, of the Beatles. We we were too scared to make any real contact. But uh, George Martin sort of popped his head in and and said, "Jolly good lads," you know. Yeah. So you actually had a lot to do with George uh, yeah. later on, didn't you? And then later on, our paths crossed again. And uh, Sir, Sir George, by the way. Sir George, indeed, and he was he's a lovely man to work with. You know, he's, he was a sweetheart, and we we uh, one of Little River Band's albums, uh, the night. Um, Time Exposure was recorded at his air studios in Montserrat in the Caribbean. We had six gorgeous weeks there. It was great. Yeah, it's pretty hard, that one. That one was uh, probably a bit more relaxing. Yeah, it was. Uh, we came on the back of Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder. They'd been there doing Tug of War just prior to that, so we heard a lot of stories. Yeah. Mm. Now, we hear, now, when you left, of course, the LRB kept going. They grabbed John Farnham, who was uh, a budding young uh, star at the time, really, and... Um, you know, from uh, reports, there was they had a lot of uh, kind of financial problems at the stage, and I, I think the fact that John was there for a while and then he disappeared as well and went on his own would be an indication that maybe, from from an outsider point of view anyway, that it's a couple guys kind of really ran that band. That's the way it was. Uh huh. Yeah, that's pretty close to the mark. Um, yeah, I mean, Graham, Graham Goble was the, definitely the driving force behind, uh, if I, behind LRB, but the chemistry of LRB was myself and him. Yes. And with Beeb in the middle, trying, yes. to, trying to keep us apart in a way, yes. you know? Yeah. But that, uh, that, that personality group was uh, the driving force, and, and luckily they were, we were all good songwriters as well. You know, we all brought good songs to the table, and that was the strength of LRB. Once you start to mess around with that, Hey, the wheels start to fall off, you know. Thank you very much for that story, Moose. And don't forget, stay tuned. Part two is coming next week. But it's all about me. I'm here with a uh, couple of the girls from the 92.9 Roadrunners. Uh, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. And it's Chrissy, is it? Yep, it is. Uh, and it took me 20 minutes before this to get it. And Anna, how are you doing? Oh, not too bad. It's awesome here tonight. Awesome. Now, tell me a bit about tonight and some about what you do. Well, basically, we're on Roadrunners. We go out on the streets. How did you score that job? Basically, you just ride in and it's, it's pot pot luck really yeah but um you go in for an interview and, yeah. and it's like lots of people go for it so it's pretty lucky to get in there do you reckon so. i'd have a shot or what oh you, you could get there yeah <laughs> oh she's saying no uh, oh. she's saying no. oh she's mean oh. I know. <laughs> and i heard you got in a pretty cool way yeah i actually won my job at 92.9 that's yeah. got to be cool. It was fantastic. Yeah. So, so uh, how did you go about doing that anyway? Um, I, Thanks, Moose. Mm, middle of last year, I entered a competition called the Rumba Reporter at 92.9. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to be sent to Melbourne yeah. to interview the stars at Melbourne Rumba. Rain a lot there? Sorry, who Does was it? Rain a lot there? It was cold. It was a bit cold. And um, came back and I got offered a job. Cool. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of things do you girls do actually in your job? Uh, basically, we promote the station. We go out on the streets. This we give out 92.9. 92.9. Yes, that's it. Love Sarah Troy and Bernie, by the way. How you doing, guys? <laughs> um, yeah, and basically, we go out on the streets. We give out free stuff. We talk to people. We get them listening to the station because it rocks. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we basically do lots of stuff around the station too, and help out paneling yeah. and all that sort of thing. So it's really cool. Yeah. And how long have you been involved? Uh, about four months. I was oh, at really? a rival station before that. So oh, right. I we were not talking about that. No. No, no, I, yeah, yeah, but I switched, so 92 rocks and so it's good. It's all good now? Yes, very. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what are some of the things you like best about your job? Obviously you get to cruise around in a cool car all day and talk to people like me, walk around the streets, but it's all good. What's the best things? I'm actually the receptionist there, so oh, if you right. walk into the station, you so get you know, me. I totally stuffed it up. You're no, not really sort of, I do both. Oh. I do all ah. different things. We, we all kind of move around the station mm -hmm. doing all different kinds of things. Yeah. So if you walk into the station during the morning, you'll see me sitting there, and then if you listen at night, you'll see us on the street. So. Cool. Cruising around. Yeah. And uh, tell me a bit about tonight. You guys enjoyed and uh, excited to be here? It's actually fantastic. I thought it would kind of be a bit only people everywhere, but it's packed. We're looking yeah. over the dance floor, yeah. and there's just this sea of 13 to 18 year olds down yeah. there. It's excellent. Awesome stuff. And uh, how do you feel about tonight? Uh, I want to get out there and groove. I mean, yeah. th there's oh, people everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've been stuck doing, you know, all the, the jobs, moving stuff around and putting signage up and things like that. But um, hopefully we'll get to dance uh, a little later. So. Take that thing? Yeah. <laughs> cool stuff. Thank you very much for your time, girls. Pleasure. Hi, we got sound. Hi, everybody. How are you going? <laughs>
Here we are at the uh, Blue Light Disco. We're talking to Claire here. I hope you can hear me. I've got two mics. Hi, Claire. How are you going? I'm really well. How are you going, love? Good, good. You're with 92.9. And this is the first time you've been here? This is the first time I've been here. We're actually broadcasting the show live upstairs. So it's absolutely mad. Are you guys having a good time? Yeah! It's mad, man. Totally mad. I'm Moose from uh, Balls and All. i got Wayne and James here. And we're talking to the beautiful Claire from 92.9. And we're about to do a big prize draw. Yeah, it's for PlayStation 2. So, like, I hope everyone has their tickets out and is looking at them as I call out the number. And let's do a bit of a build-up. Wayne, PlayStation 2, what do you reckon? I reckon that uh, I should win it. But if I can't win it, somebody here should. How would you know how to use it anyway? That's the problem. Oh, Sting. I actually have some computer knowledge, but not much. <laughs> James, PlayStation 2. All I can say, Moose, is I'm excited. There it is. Thank you very much. Oh, no. oh, oh, it's not given to. Has everyone got their tickets out ready to go? Go Craig! Go Craig! Alright, Claire's about to make one of you very happy. Alright, it's mine. Thank you, congratulations! Hey, well Yay! done! Claire's won the prize! That's fair, isn't it? Is that fair? Nah. Can I say something? Yeah. Rachel! Yeah! <laughs> okay. Alright, um... Okay, these are the numbers. 15, 4, 4, 5, 7. 15, 4, 4, 5, 7. You did not. <laughs> Pretend. I didn't really win. I won. <laughs> oh, here it is right here. 1, 5, 2, 4, 7. Is that it? No. Ah, good try though. The number, the number was 154457. 154457. Hello, are you in the house? Okay, where are you? 154457. 154457. If you're not here in 10 seconds, we're going to redraw. 10, 9, 8, redraw, right. Here we go. Someone's pushing in here. Here we go. What's your name? Turn around. Turn around. Turn around here. Here you go. What's your name? Emily. Emily, you just want a PlayStation 2. What do you reckon? Cool. Don't be so excited. Okay. There she is, everyone. Emily just won the PlayStation 2. How you going, Moose? Congratulations. I so am jealous. She did not seem excited, man. What is up with that? It's PS2, baby, all the way. I would be doing cartwheels if I could. Like I am inside. I am doing cartwheels. Congratulations. And thank you to everyone who came tonight. I hope you're having a really good time. And the rocks, the blue light rocks. Okay, I think we're going to do some music, are we? Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Some cool tunes. All right, well, uh, that was crazy. Everyone had a good time. And Wayne, uh, Wayne, the music's hit Wayne. Oh, what? Well, it feels so empty without me. Anyway. And we got all the gang here behind us all having fun. How you going? Wayne! It's so fun! You like the blue light disco? Yeah. We're all here having a great time. James, it's a, a pretty crowded, isn't it? It's going off, most, and I'm uh, a bit disappointed that I didn't get that PlayStation, you know? It just was not fair. Uh, I couldn't get over how excited she was. Yeah, really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, everyone, we're still here at the Blue Light Disco, but we're going to be going to a break. When we come back, we're going to be showing you what happened at the free, uh, sorry, the Rockingham Rugby Union Club uh, not too long ago. So we'll be back after this break. Hi everybody, welcome back, and uh, I'm down in Rockingham, uh, you might remember a while back we came down and had a bit of a chat and showed you some of the uh, the beautiful Maori dancing and everything, and we talked about the young fellas, some of them sitting behind me here, uh, on their way off to another country to play rugby, we spoke to Neville here, hi Neville, how are you going? Good Moose, how are you? Tell us a bit about how everything's progressed so far. Well everything's progressed really, really well, um, since you guys were here last time we've been able to bring Air New Zealand on board as a major sponsor. Uh, the Rockingham Hotel are continuing to 
sponsor us as well. Our fundraising has been successful and uh, assuming tonight goes off really well, which it should do. Holy moly, not Air New Zealand. <laughs> are they the people that are looking after you guys? They're looking after us very, very well, mate. And as you know, four flights uh, every week, Perth to Auckland. So um, if you need to go to New Zealand, they're the people to fly with. And I'm told that, let's just give them a plug. I'm told that <laughs> they uh, they really look after you well on the plane. As a lot of these young fellas here are about to find out. Oh, absolutely. 25th of September, we're uh, on our way. We We've uh, got our games organised, we've got our accommodation organised, everything's planned. Uh, next week we order our uh, tour kit, so we really are almost there. Now how many guys are you looking at taking from uh, from here? Is, and it's not just from Rockingham only though, is it? No, it is only from Rockingham only. Um, we're taking 18 players, uh, there's two managers and we've got uh, about six or eight parents going along as well. So it's uh, it's going to be a pretty big trip. Good. Now how do you feel the guys are, are going to go against the uh, the teams over there? And who who are, who are they playing? Uh, we're going down the Bay of Plenty. We're playing uh, selection sides from uh, Western and Eastern Bay of Plenty, plus a high school side from Fokatani. And then we'll go up to Auckland and play the Massey side at Auckland. Uh, the boys should go really well. There shouldn't be any dramas. Uh, originally they were going to put us against some very, very uh, stiff opposition, but, uh, you know, Rock Rockingham or rugby in Western Australia is not as strong as it is in New Zealand, so we don't want to go over and get the boys smashed. So um, we've got the we've got the weights, we've got the sizes, and they'll be playing kids their own sizes. So Good. Good. we'll be all right. Now, uh, tell us about a few of these fellas here. Who do we have here uh, hiding behind us? Uh, well, the bloke nearest to the camera is actually my young bloke, uh, Andrew or AJ. Is this? He plays halfback. In the How you going, AJ? All right. Good. Good. That, put him, that put him on the spot, didn't it? Hey, hey. Turn your back on me, sunshine. Yeah, we'll get him. The guy next to him is actually Dudley Cortland. Dudley's our 5'8". He's the uh, captain of the side. Um, yeah, he's a bit of a talent. The guy sitting next to him is our, our second row, Glenn. Um, I'm told that Glenn later on is actually going to get up and sing a song. Is that right? Well, actually, the boys don't know it, but they're all getting up uh, later on to do the haka. All right. All right. Well done. So, um, wow. See at the front over here. We've got Farron McCoy. Farron's a uh, rough, tough front rower. Let's have a look at Farron. Farron's, Farron's, Farron's trying to pretend to be shy. Stand up there, Farron. Farron, are you shy? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who's who's there hiding beside, beside him? Yeah, another front rower. Would you believe it? We've got two shy front rowers. Uh, Travel Natamariki uh, sitting down there. I don't know where his shirt is, but we'll get into him. <laughs> he's he's wearing the other uh, Air New Zealand shirt, and and there beside him, uh, hiding real well. Yeah, Brendan, Brendan Backer. Brendan's actually uh, a couple of years younger than the boys, but he's coming across. He's played with us a couple of times this There's year. There's nothing worse than when guys try to hide from me, you know what I mean? So what we'll do is we'll come in here and say, g'day, how you going, Brendan? All right. Good, good. And what's his name, this fellow right here beside you? Jade. Hey? Jade. So you're looking forward to this trip away? Yeah. And obviously, who would you like to thank who's looked after you so well? No one. Oh, that's real nice. That's real nice. He's never going to be a politician, is he? No. Good on you, boys. Have a good time while you're away. Now, if someone wants to find out a bit more, or maybe they'd like to uh, help out by donating something or other, how can they do that? They can contact me on my mobile, 94. Uh, we did it again. 94. Yeah. 94. Don't use the 94. It's 0. 0, zero 402 359 uh, 891. Okay, so give them a call. That's Neville. Give them a call if you'd like to help out these young fellas and we're going to find out how they went when they come back? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the boys are currently sitting second on the ladder in the local competition and uh, we think we're a good chance to win that. And uh, yeah, we'll go over there and do a good account of ourselves for, for the state, for the club and, um, you know, just for the boys themselves. It'll be a great experience. And I'm here with Stuart Dart. How are you today? Well, thanks, Action. Now, what's your role here at the club? Well, I'm the uh, secretary of the uh, club down here and uh, my role really is on the administration side off the field. Uh, we've got a fairly new committee this year which is responsible for uh, running the club and we're really trying to drive a bit of development down here, uh, not only with the rugby club but within the area and getting some, uh, you know, the, the rugby club really involved in what's happening in the area and the development of the area as well. Now you said uh, off screen that you're uh, a player and now you're uh, the secretary of the club. What sparked that move? Um, the the the, move, the reason behind that is uh, really in my uh, personal life. I'm uh, uh, trying to.
to get involved in sports management as a career and uh, doing it on a voluntary basis is a really good way to uh, build up experience. Uh, I've already completed a, uh, some studies in that area at uh, Edith Cowan University so I'm really just uh, developing myself uh, on a personal side in being involved as a volunteer at the club and also trying to uh, you know, build what the club's doing down here. We've got a lot of uh, fantastic juniors involved with the club, a lot of uh, really good people involved with the club, so just trying to, to get it going and uh, really uh, make it a force in Western Australian Rugby Union. Now, how do you think the team's going? Uh, this year uh, has been a mixed year, I suppose. We've, uh, we've seen some really good growth and performances, uh, particularly with our juniors. On the senior side, uh, our third grade and second grade sides are, are both uh, looking at finishing mid-table. Our Colts have had a really good season as well, and they're, uh, they're on the edge of the finals, and we're really hoping that, uh, that they'll make the finals this year. Our first grade, uh, we've been fairly competitive all year, but haven't been able to crack it for a win. Um, but I think that's just around the corner. Uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks we've had uh, seven boys from the club res representing Western Australia uh, at a schoolboys championship in Tasmania. Uh, the Western Australian team won that championship and from that we've had four boys selected in an, in an Australian secondary uh, schools uh, team and they'll go on to play at the Australian schoolboys championship. So that's really fantastic news for the club and uh, all goes well for the future. Now, most of you know that I'm heavily involved in the military and I couldn't sort of go past your shirt. Now, what do you mean by the uh, rugby union of the Navy? Uh, when I was uh, playing, I uh, was lucky enough, well, my, my former career, I was in the Navy for 11 and a half years and uh, I was fortunate enough to represent the Navy a, uh, a couple of times uh, at Rugby Union. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have them take me to the Canada and the United States uh, on a Rugby Union tour and that's really the great part about uh, Rugby Union, the opportunity to travel overseas as these uh, the guys, the under 15 team from the club is going to experience in September uh, going to New Zealand and that's what it's all about, Rugby Union is getting overseas, travelling and uh, having a really enjoyable, sociable time. Courtesy of Air New Zealand. Now how do you think the boys will go over there? I think they'll have a fantastic time. Uh, Bill and uh, Neville have really got the boys going, going well. They're travelling quite well in the junior competition here. Uh, the competition over there will be fairly stiff uh, because rugby in New Zealand's uh, a whole lot more of a religion than what it is over here. But I think they'll, uh, they'll have a great time. They'll learn quite a bit and uh, they'll really get to experience what rugby's all about. Uh, not only the playing side but the culture side off the field as well. Well, thanks for talking to us. Yeah, I'm happy to talk to our good buddy, Rachel Teriyaki. Hi, Rachel. How are you? How are you going, Miss? And who's this here? Helena. 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 She's, she's part of the culture group. Yeah. yeah. And, um, Miss, thank you very much for coming to my house today. Uh, that's awesome. But um, I just want to... Tell, tell us a bit about the hungy, all right? Because uh, I know you're going to try and get this over quick, but I'm not going to let you. The hungy. Tell us about a, a traditional Maori hungy that we see. Yeah. Uh, it is a traditional Maori hungy. The last time that we spoke, our last coach group, I said to them, I'm going to promise them we're going to have a hungy. This one here, what we do, we just put everything in the... Yes, wait. Uh, Did it leave anything on my neck? No. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway. It's blood. Two holes in blood. <laughs> Anyway, sorry miss, the thing is we do the traditional Mary Hungy, we put everything in the f in the hole, as you saw today, um, and what we do, we put like, do you want to know what's in the hole? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay, okay we put pork. Usually there's nothing in a hole. Uh, Alright, go on. He's quick, isn't yeah. he? Yeah? Yeah. yeah, we do pork, mutton, um, chickens, uh, veggies, and see these people that are sneaking past us like these yeah. ones here? Yeah, yeah. they do the, the, the traditional Maori bread and everything like that. Yeah. Um, yep. uh, we do everything in the hole. What we do, we put the um, put it in the hole, then we put the, the, the baskets in the hole, then we do the... They're wrapped in uh, aluminium foil and everything. Oh, just to keep it clean yeah. so the sand doesn't get in. Yeah. Then we do the hessian bags. Oh, we do the calico, then the hessian bags. Then we cover it up. And that's we, wet as well, yeah. And it's wet and it's like it's 
steam cook it. Yeah. I don't know. If and how long does it stay in there? Um, okay, we we, we, left, we put it down about two, so we put it so about four or five hours. Yeah. yeah? But that's all. That's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah. And but then you get people walking by, biting your neck and stuff like that. Oh yeah, like this fella here. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you very much, Wayne. <laughs> Yeah. But I'll tell you what, Miss, thank you very much. Now for tell us here. about the guys who put all this down. we got Frank is one of them. Frank's her husband. <laughs> Frank is my husband, yeah, and he did it. And I, I'll have to take it off. I mean, I've got a lot of support here. I mean, we've got even outside support. I mean, but all the parents for the under-15 rugby tour, which we're all going home September the 25th. And I says, and there is a lot of work, but then there's also a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, some people you'd like to say thank you to, maybe some sponsors, someone who helped you out with this? I'll tell you what, Miss. I thank you oh, for a start. Cool. And I thank Action Man over there. And I think Wish James and Wayne was here, but never mind. But I'd like to thank Air New Zealand. Yeah. They're our sponsors up there. We can yeah, turn we around over them. there. Yeah. Um, I've got them. I've also got the Rocket and Rugby Union Club again to support us tonight. And I've also got all whoever participates with us tonight and it's a excellent it's gonna be an excellent night because we've got the band, we've got the culture group that's performing again, which is this one here. And I'll tell you something Miss, if it wasn't for Frank and his band of merry men out there, we wouldn't and be And women and the women. Oh sorry. And the women. What about did anyone like butchers or anyone help you out? The butchers. Oh yeah for sure. Yeah and I also like to thank um Jason's and oh, calling up yeah. and um, helping us tonight in regards to our meat and vegetables and bread and whatever. And I'd also like to thank um, the Rockingham City Council yes. and the marquee. Okay, good, yep. good. Um, and I'd also like to thank, who can I ask and I think? Anybody else want to be thanked here? <laughs> just everyone, just everyone. Everybody, oh. say hello. Oi. Hi. All right, now if someone uh, wants to uh, help out uh, for the uh, raising funds for the kids, yeah, phone number for the kids, all right? Is that all right? Okay, and the number is? Nine? Um, nine. Neville. We'll, we'll find out and put it on Neville. We'll put Neville. Neville's number. Neville's yeah, give Neville a call, all right? Thanks Thanks a lot for that, Rachel, and thanks to all the gang here too. And uh, it's a great effort, and there's still a huge crowd outside to come inside. I'll tell you what, thank you very much, Miss. I think you've come to my house. Yeah, yeah. And just stay in cool. yeah. Are you going to say hello to everybody? Hello. Thanks for that, Moose. Now I'm talking with Isaac. Now you're the first grade coach, am I right? Yep. Now how long? First how long? Grade captain. Oh, first grade captain. Okay. Now how long have you been in that position? Uh, ooh, for about six games so far. Because I was suspended for the first four games, so. But man, no, I've had that problem. Now, how do you find the position going so far? Um, it's really hard, uh, captain inside. It's uh, we haven't won a game yet, and it's just hard trying to pick up the team when you when you're on the back foot. We've been getting a big flogging lately. Uh, well, how do you think the boy? As in, is there anything that you can attribute that to? As in, something that can improve on? Yeah, it's just a matter of getting um, numbers to training. Um, we used to, we rely um, we rely on a lot of navy boys to make up our um, numbers. And as you know, the navy boys are away in the Gulf and uh, with all this terrorist thing going around, so it's hard getting our numbers. Yeah. Well, as I've played good on, as some of the viewers know, and it's the same thing we're trying to get five guys down. You can almost never train. Now, how do you feel as in you go towards the rest of the season? Well. Um, We've got the last four games are pretty much all the, t um, the teams are right on the top. Um, we're just going to try and um, have fun for the last four games. We're just going to try and open it up, play um, an enjoyable rugby, um, and just hopefully just see the season through without any injuries. So how long have you been playing for? Um, this is actually my third year at Rocky Ann. Yeah, that's three years. What inspired you to play rugby? <laughs> Actually, um, my old man used to give me an idea and say, hey, you better go play rugby. I like, oh, yes, dad, you know, no choice. Yeah. Uh, so how do you find it anyway? Um, 
it's actually I find rugby compared to league is more um, to me it's more professional because I I took um, time off to play three years of rugby league and when I came back to uh, rugby it's just the whole structure and that they, they look after their players and now for the viewers that don't know what are, are there any main differences between the two different codes yeah well but in league, yeah, it's more more one on one, um, more I find it more aggressive. And in league, uh, well, I had a problem when I was at rugby. I always used to follow the ball. In league, you don't follow the ball. You just have to just run up and then take a tackle to come back and. Do you guys, to, oh, sorry, I didn't know. That. <laughs> That's a pretty big plate of food, there, Moose. <laughs> I can always get those shots in. Now. If, they, if someone who's interested in playing rugby, is there anything you could say to those people? Um, geez, uh, just, um... Okay, <laughs> okay, here's a, here's a, I'll rephrase that. Yeah. If someone wanted to play, is there any attribute someone would need, let's say, um, physical size or speed or as such? Nah, just, um, just a lot of heart, that's all. I can hear, I, I love the uh, small guy, doesn't matter what size, just as long as they show a lot of heart, that's the best player. You know, you're going to have to be big or anything, just, you know, show a lot of courage in that on the, on the field. Everyone res uh, respects you after that. Well, so I play good iron, I'm not built like a tank, like Moose for instance, but I can run like a wind, which sort of helps you get out of those little tight situations. Now, <laughs> if someone did want to, thought, okay, we like, we are interested in playing um, rugby, is there a number they could call for instance? Um, yes, there is, but I actually don't have it on me. <laughs> well, we'll probably, we'll probably print it on the screen. Is our little good friend Tony behind the camera as well? Now, we've got to go, but thanks for talking to us, and let's see where we end up. Welcome back from the break, everybody. Uh, my name is James, as you all know. And how you doing, Wayne? I'm doing fine, and who cares? Now, anyway. <laughs> While I got the gold member in my hand, I'd like to say hello to Rachel Teriyaki from the Rockingham Rugby Union Club. I you think I got that right. right. Of course, you'll run over you. Yeah, and uh, it's, all over. it's all over you. All so, right. I'm quitting. Thank you, mate. Uh, your check's in the mail. Anyway, as we said, welcome back. And uh, Rachel, I hope uh, your team does well in September. Now, as we move along, big events like this just don't happen. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people behind the scenes that do a great job and make sure that all the kids have something to do and that's great because there was a couple of kids trying to steal my hubcaps the other day and I didn't like it so anyway I'm glad they had events like this so we're going to get some names of some of the uh, supervisors and people that are involved and your name is Lavinia and Jade hi I'm Jade <laughs> I knew it all the time and I'm Tash I'm Amanda Kelly and Mark Oh, okay. Now, I've got a couple of speeding fines I need to talk to you people about getting alleviated. No, I mean, uh, something like this, to get something like this started, uh, you know, who should I talk to initially? Let me just, can I moonwalk over here? Woo! No, all right, anyway. <laughs> anyway, as we move along, um, can you tell, oh, sorry. That would hurt my dance steps. Now, anyway, um, if you could tell us what it's like to get something, you know, what goes into getting an event like this happening. Uh, a lot of organisation. A lot of organisation. We need people uh, to supervise, we need police volunteers, all the people here, bar Jade are, are police officers. Uh, Jade's one of our civilian volunteers who gives up her time to come down here and help. Uh, she organised the meals for the kids tonight. Um, it's just, there's a huge amount of uh, organisation that goes into organising just one event. People have, uh, really don't have any idea of just how much goes into it. Uh, you need to ensure that we have enough people here to supervise the kids. Uh, we've got 700 odd kids here tonight, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, we need to cover the first aid, we need to cover the exits, because as you know at a blue light to the kids that once they're in they can't leave unless an adult comes to collect them. You know, that was an interesting statement you made about supervising, because usually we need about seven to 800 people just to supervise action man in an event like this, so I can understand what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I don't know about action man, but uh, we get a few kids here that thinks, think they're action man, don't worry about that. But, uh, <laughs> All right then, well we're going to move on along, and, and can you tell us a little bit about your involvement? Oh, basically we just sort of come down after work and supervise the kids and make sure they're not getting into any trouble. Okay, then. Well, that's good. And uh, if you can tell us a little bit about what you do. 
We, um, all the recruits do the same jobs. Um, at the start we um, wander around the car parks, just make sure everyone comes inside and then when it starts we just walk around the dance floor, chat with the kids, see how, you know, if, that, if they're enjoying the night and see what can be improved for future events. Oh, that's pretty good because actually I was wandering around the car park a little earlier myself. I was hoping you and you guys were going to pick me up. But um, anyway, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Uh, yeah, this is the third time I've been here. We always have a good time, just try and keep charge of all the kids, make sure that they're not doing anything wrong, but also that they're all kept safe themselves. Okay, well, that's good. And uh, Jade, I heard you did some of the cooking and what have you, and uh, that's all happening in your um, uh, community volunteer. So I take it you're in this area, and what got you involved? Um, I got involved uh, three years ago just for something to do really. Um, I don't actually come from this community, I'm Fremantle, um, so I come up here. <laughs> hey, they finally kicked some butt in that derby, good on them. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'm, I'm also on the committee, so uh, help sort of make this more fun for the kids and yeah, just bit, make it the best it can be. So. Okay, now um, a lot of people want to know, have you gone out there and done a little moonwalking yourself or has any of the supervisors gone out and danced yet? Has that happened yet? Yeah. Uh, some of them have, yeah. Uh, there have been times when the sort of police officers have all got together and danced, but I personally haven't really. Oh, okay then. And uh, yes, if uh, you can tell us what your involvement is like. I, I think you were over there dancing a little bit earlier, is that right? Oh, not tonight, no. Oh, no. not tonight. All right then, I noticed when we were trying to get in that door, we asked somebody to move the door or move something, and you actually tried to pick up the door. You want to tell us about that incident? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, they make uh, tough cups nowadays. Uh, <laughs> we can move doors, walls, uh, cars, anything, so yeah, just leave it to us. i tell you what, those styrofoam doors can do a heck of a lot of damage there. Now, um, as we move along, is there a uh, phone number or something that somebody wanted to get in touch with you guys? Uh, yeah, we've got a couple of phone numbers. You can ring me at uh, Senior Constable Channings at Midland Police Station. Uh, you can ring Joondal Police Station on, um, what is it, 94000 uh, they'll either put you through to me or give you the number to contact me at uh, Midland. Over mobile you can get me on, it's uh, 041 94 905 You can ring that pretty well any time during the day, uh, I'm always available. I'll answer your questions about the, the blue lights. Um, We've, uh, I'm on state council, it's a governing body that looks after all, looks after all the blue lights in the state. Uh, we've got two other members here at Wanneroo Blue Light that are state council members. That's not too bad out of uh, 11 people so on state council. We're, our main agenda is to make sure that the kids have somewhere to go that is safe, uh, that is, you know, without worry for the parents. They, they know they can drop the kids off here. We'll have first aid, we'll have supervisors, we'll have officers here, we'll have volunteers here and if anything does occur we can deal with it very quickly. Oh, that's Mark, fantastic. Just while you're there, too, the, all the police officers told me, too, that Mark is the best dancer here, too. Woohoo! Well, well. She got another one, uh, Constable Patterson, who was going to be here tonight, but he didn't turn up. So, to uh, Constable Patterson, they missed you up on the dance floor. Well, I'm sure he's probably at home dancing somewhere. Now, um, we're going to go to another story, but before I do that, I've got to ask James, because I'm a bit you know, cranky tonight. James, what story are we going to? Well, we're going to go to a story I did recently at the uh, Belmont Kart Hire go-kart track. So uh, check this out. I'm speaking with Ali, one of the workers here. How are you doing? Not too bad. How are you? Good. Now, can you tell me uh, some of the rules we can see people getting in the cars? Just what generally happens here? Yeah, no worries. We just work on a wait your turn basis. So we get people to come on in, yeah. fill out a form. We explain the rules and pop them on a cart yeah. and get them out racing. Okay. Now, uh, I have an actual advanced car license here. Uh, can you just tell us about the different grades in it and stuff like that? Yeah, we've got five different levels of carts. So we start on the standard cart, we get everyone out racing. Once they learn what, they do, what they're doing and they get the right times, we pop them onto the advanced carts. Yeah. And then from the advanced up, we not only require times, but yeah. also how many races you've had. Yeah. And from the advanced, then you go up to the supers, yeah. which go about 55k an hour. That's alright. And then you go from the supers to the elite after about 20 races, and they go about 65 to 70. Sounds good to me. And then the fastest one, the one that everyone wants to go on, super elite, so about 100k an hour. So are you going to put me in one of those? <laughs> it's up to the managers, that one is. We're going to have to work on that one. And... Um, <laughs> Obviously, like someone might be at home watching the show and think I've never tried go karting, or you know, it's interesting. How much does it cost, and you know, is it hard to do? Can anyone come out and do it? Now we've got a height restriction of 145 centimeters, yeah. so as long as the kids are taller than that, mm. 
Now, if anyone out there is actually uh, watching the show, which is a bonus, um, and would like to come down and give it a go, how much does it cost and what are the rules? Can anyone drive? All that kind of stuff. No worries. Okay, we've got a height restriction of 145 centimetres. Which is four, how tall? 4 foot 9, around about that tall. About my height, yep. So well, I'm cool. If they're taller than that, then they can ride the carts by themselves. Yep. If not, then we've got twin carts, which they can ride with their mum or dad. About that high? <laughs> How that high? I don't know what that was, people, so sorry. Stay tuned, there's some weird stuff going on tonight. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, no, no worries. Um, yeah, okay, our price is for a standard. We've got a five minute ride for $9, a 10 minute ride is 15 yeah. or the half an hour voucher, which is three 10 minute rides valid for six months, and that's yeah. 38 That's pretty cool. And that's on standard, so the yeah. price has increased with the levels, so it's just $1 or $2 on top of those prices. That's all right. Now, does it take much maintenance to keep these things going? Obviously, you get a lot of people coming through. Yeah. Um, depending, I mean, if, if everyone's good and follows the rules and doesn't crash, then not really. If people crash, then then our manager Jimmy does get a bit cranky at times. I'm stuffed. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, people usually are all right. It's, we just try and, you know, get all the rules followed, and it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think me and the boys are going to head out the track, so you can see me doing my fine stuff. Are you going to come out and join us? Uh, after my shift, I will, or I'll get in trouble. <laughs> what is the phone number if anyone uh, would like to call and get in contact? No worries. It's 94791200. Thank you very much again. Let's chat with some of the people here, like this little fella here. Hello, what's your name? Number six he is. What's your name? Nathan. Nathan, how do you like the uh, go-kart? Uh, I reckon it's great. What, now there's different licenses. What license are you on? Uh, it's first time so I'm standard. Okay, alright. About to have a go? Yep. Alright, and your name? Frank. Frank, how you going mate? Yeah, alright. Yourself? Good. Having a good time here? Yeah, it's alright. Gonna go on now. So yeah. Is it your first right. time too? Yeah, yeah. First time as well. Cool. Cool. Here's some guys just coming off. How you going mate? Good mate. How are you? Good, good. What's your name? Chris. Chris, you have a good time out there? Yeah, mate. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's different licenses. What license are you on? Just a standard, I think, mate. Yeah. Good enough? Yeah, good enough. Good yeah. enough. Yeah. No worries, Chris. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to try and get some of the guys on the uh, on the go-karts and see what happens here. And uh, you never know. I mean, it's, it's brick walls around the place, but that doesn't stop action, man. So we'll see what happens. All right. Thanks a lot for that, James. Uh, we're going to get some names here. And your name is? Stephen. All right, Stephen. Uh, why are you here tonight? To dance. Okay, and how old are you? I'm 13. All right, then. And anybody you want to say hello to? Uh, hi, Mom. <laughs> okay, that's a good kid. At least Mom knows where he is. And your name is? Campbell. Campbell. And how old are you? 11 turning 12. 11 turning 12. That's good. Um, so what do you like to do, young man? Um, not much. All right. Well, that's very exciting. We'll have to get back to you later. And? Lauren. And you're how old? 13. 13. Now, um, is there any type of music, particular music you like? I'm um, just R&B and all that. Okay, then. So I know you're going to get out there and dance later, right? All right, good on you. And Sabrina. Sabrina. And how old are you? 13. 13. <laughs> She's laughing already. It must be my cologne. Anyway, um, it, well, why are you here tonight? You just with your friends or you like to dance? I dance. <laughs> all right, then. I, I see Campbell keeps moving up. Come on down here, Campbell. <laughs> uh, I'm Megan. And right, Megan, how old are you? 13. 13. And uh, these are your friends? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Oh. <laughs> now, is there anybody you want to say hello to? You said that real confidently. Is there anybody you want to say hello to? Um, hi, everybody at our school. Everybody at your school. That's very diplomatic. I like that. <laughs> um, my name's Josh. Josh. And there is a little person under that hat. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> and how old are you, Josh? Um, 13. Okay. And what do you like to do? Um, that you can talk about on camera. I like to surf and I like to listen to punk music. <laughs> um, my name is Mickey and I like to um, sometimes um, ride motocross and stuff. And I'm, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay. And? Kezia. Kezia. Okay, that's a very beautiful name there. Now, if you want to tell us what's happening. Nothing, just hanging out here, you know. Okay. Um, I'm Sophie. And? And can I have to say hi to people? Yeah. Um, uh, my friends from Woodvale and Ellie and Sasha and Chloe and Kezia and Lauren right and all my friends. Okay. Yeah, Doug. <laughs> and your name is? Sure. And you want to say hello to anybody? Yeah, Ellie and Lauren and yeah, that's everyone. Nice. everyone. All right. And yes, I'm going to, you can say something in one second. Um, my name's Chloe and I'm 14. <laughs> and yeah, and hi to Marie. Because if I don't say hi to her, she'll kill me. Um, and yeah, these people. And Steve, I guess I say hi, Steve. And yeah, just everyone at Wood. I see it's a big plug for 92.9. And you wanted to say something else? Yes, have a birthday, Nana, and have a birthday for, for the weekend. 
Yeah, all right then. Andrew. All right then. The day. And thank you for the win against Rio. All right. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen, and do have a good day. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for that, Wayne. That was cool. Yeah, it was definitely an excellent night. A lot of great kids, a lot of great support staff. Definitely a fun evening. Now, don't forget, parents, if you got some kiddies uh, around that age uh, that want to come down, make sure you give those numbers a call. Come down and have fun. Have a look at them all. Having a bit of fun. Come have a look at them. And James, what do you reckon? Yeah, I had a great time here. And while we're here, I'd like to say hello to the Beep Beep Tarina. How are you doing? And her brother Anthony. Hope you're getting well, son. And uh, Anthony, how are you having? To, how are you finding tonight? This is one of those times where I prefer to be behind the camera. Great. All right, well, look, it's been great. We've had a great time here. Make sure you come down. I think it's the first Saturday of every month. Give those numbers a call and bring them down. They're well supervised. Even on the stairway, no one can go in or out. It's well looked after, and the support staff are fantastic, as well as are all the gang here. Yeah, actually, it's been fantastic. And like I said, if you got children and you want to get them down there, they can have fun and interact with people in their own age group, this is the place to be. And August. 24th, don't forget the big concert. A long way to the top. We got uh, part two of our chat with Glenn Short. And coming up soon, we got a big interview with John Travolta, which was fantastic. Come fly with me. But anyway, yeah, that was How can you hear? Hi, right, everyone. Thanks for watching. The name of the show is. We'll catch you next week. Hey! <laughs> well, the wonders never cease. <laughs> I'm here with James and Action, but how you doing, James? Very good. Why are we laughing so much, Wayne? We're laughing because we just told Action Man, slow down when you get to the intersection. So Action Man is ignoring us, and he jacks by us through an intersection and slides through on a wet turf and gets picked up by the police. Now, Action Man, did they ask you to have a blow? They thought I'd been drinking, yes. <laughs> yeah, I would have thought you'd been drinking, too. No, I, could, I got a pretty score free, so they were pretty, um... <laughs> you got a caution. And I I like your line. It was I like your line when the police came up to you. To the police. Uh, excuse me, sir. Why did you slide through that intersection? <laughs> well, uh, I was trying to get through the intersection. Howdy to everybody. I was trying to get to the intersection. And I just ignored all the stop signs and caution signs. Go does not action, man. <laughs> and ran right means go faster. Yeah. <laughs> and so now we're out on the road because action man forgot one thing. You know what he forgot? <laughs> the, the stop break. sign, yeah. the stop sign and the brake. But anyway, you have that action, man. So hopefully we can get home. Kids, I just like to say, don't do this at home. <laughs> hopefully we can get home scot-free with no more incidents. Balls, Balls on, on would like, would like to, to thank the following.